What's up guys? So we're gonna do a quick video today and I wanted to go over something that's very important um, for some of the upcoming videos where we're gonna, we're gonna be doing some player missile graphics or some sprites. Um, there's a little technique that I want to show you guys on how to insert assembly language into basic like we did before but in short form or a character string form. So let's just get into it real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna um, load up the original program where we changed the border color um, using assembly language inside basic. And what we had done is if you go back and look at that video, we basically poked the values of the assembly language into memory. So for example, here in location 8192, which in hex is location 2000 in the computer, we've got 26 bytes that we're reading from our data statements here. And these bytes actually represent a, the small assembly language program in machine code format that actually changes the border color. And what we're doing is we're reading each value, we're poking it into memory, and then we're going to the next value. So we're not gonna go over that program, but we're gonna go ahead and run it. So now those values are in memory and we can call that machine language routine by calling USR for user routine and the memory location 8192. And you can see we've got our border colors changed and it's basically looping indefinitely until we press a key and then it changes it back. So what I wanted to show you was how we can get this, um, this basic program, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines into two lines. And let me show you that program and then I'm gonna show you how I did it. So let's go ahead and clear and let's load that program up. <clears throat> now, as you can see here, we've got two lines. We're dimensioning, dimensioning a string, ML string, and we're making it 26 characters which represents 26 characters that we used in the other program for the machine language. And then we're assigning to that um, character string these series of characters, and some of these are invoy inverse, some of them are special characters, but what is actually this is inside this string? Okay, well we're gonna find out in just a second. So we assign the string those characters, and then we're going here and we're once again executing uh, a machine language routine and what we're telling it to execute is whatever characters are at the address of, that's what this function does. ADR says, go ahead and get the address in memory of this string, ML string, which stands for machine language string in my program, and run it. So let's go ahead and run the program. And you can see, we've got our border colors changed. Woohoo! Press enter key, goes away. Run it again, color string, press the enter key, goes again. Now if we print that string, you can see those characters, okay? So how did I get the machine language program into those characters? Each one of these characters represents that number or one number in that data array that we had before. 102 was the first one, um, 162 for that load X register and so on. So it would be rather hard to try and figure out which of these characters represents those numbers and try and type those in manually. So let me show you a program that I actually discovered long time ago inside this edition of compute, uh, analog computing, January 1989. I don't know if you guys can see that. January 1989, issue 68. Um, this is actually a pretty good, um, edition of this magazine um, that talks a lot about writing games, the memory map of the Atari, but I'm gonna go to a section. This is actually a game called Inferno that you can type in. We might do that one day. Let me go to this section that talks about game design workshop, okay? And there is a small program that the writer of this article presents here and you can see here, it's very small, but what it's doing is, it's changing the graphics mode zero, which is the text mode, and it's printing out line 100 where it's, he's dimensioning a string, and then he's assigning that string, the first character of the string, a quotation mark, then he's reading through a loop, grabbing data values, 
appending them to that string, and then he's closing off that string with a quotation mark. So really what he's doing, if we go back to our screen here, he's building a line, a basic line. The men, this line right here, he's building inside that program. Okay, so if you don't know what I mean, you will in a second. Let me load this up. Let's clear the screen. Let's load up the version that I wrote. And we'll get into how it works. So here's the program. So as you can see on line one, we're doing something similar to what he did, or line 10, I'm sorry. We're printing quotation mark 9,000, this is gonna be, in our case, line number 9,000, way out of the way of any basic program that we're writing. And we're dimensioning our machine language string, ML string, to 26 characters, colon. And then inside this, remember, we're printing this. So this is gonna end up on a line in basic. We're also saying ML string is equal to, we're closing that string, and then we're appending the actual quotation mark, which is character string 34. And then what we're doing is we're gonna loop 26 times, one through 26. We're gonna read up these numerical values, 104, 162, 255, and so on. And we're gonna print them out to the screen, character string 27, um, which is a space, and then the actual, the actual number that we're reading, okay? And then we're gonna print after the loop, we're gonna print that, that closing quotation mark, okay? So let's run that program and see what it does. Okay, did everybody see what happened there? Now if we list our program, our program is exactly the way it was. So what we have to do is, let's go up here and press enter on this line that it printed. Let's clear the screen and now you'll notice that we have 9,000 already listed in our program and it's typed out for us. We didn't have to go through and figure out which of these characters or control characters needed to be typed in order to append to these string. It's a pretty cool trick that allows you to get a line number created with the string and the machine code that you need. So what I do is I type new, I come up here, I get rid of 9,000 and I make it line 10 and now I've got a program that has one line number that has the machine code in it. So then what I'll do is I'll list this out to the drive and we'll just call it whatever. Now if I ever need that machine code in any of my programs, let's say I make a program, uh, you know, the old hello world. And let's say for some reason I needed that machine language code to be incorporated in this program. Actually, before I do that, let's change this to line uh, 50 and line 60. Let's get rid of 20, 10 and 20. Because remember, I had saved that line to disk as line number 10. So if I bring in that program into this source code, now I've got that machine language code that I can now use inside this program. So what we're gonna be doing, and the reason why I wanted to show you how to do this is because when we start to write sprites or player missile graphics as they're called in the Atari, we're gonna be doing a lot of things in basic that require speed. And instead of having you know, tons of lines with data statements, and reading those data statements and poking them into memory, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to have a single line in our code that runs a machine language routine. So if we have one or two or three, let's say we have three machine language uh, routines that are gonna speed up our game and allow us to move the sprites around the screen quickly, I'd rather have three lines of code in my program than say 18 or 20 lines of code, okay? So use this program that I showed you, and I'll have a link in the description on where you can download this, this sample code where you can actually use it in your own programs. The only thing you'll need to modify in this program to use it for yourself is um, just change the data statements and the length, the length of the actual um, string. So if your machine language program is 30 characters or 40 characters, you put that here, change it here as well, the number of characters you're gonna read. 
and then insert the machine code characters down here at the bottom. Okay, so once again, this is I wanted to show this to you because the next video uh, that I'm working on right now is how to do sprites and graphics, you know, the first round in basic where we're actually going to create a spaceship and we're going to move it across the screen. And I'm going to show you two versions of that program. The first version is going to be strictly in basic and you're going to see how slow it, it is. And then we're going to incorporate some machine language and you're going to see how much better and faster that code runs in basic. All right, so that's it for today. Quick video on how to incorporate um, a, a more streamlined version of machine language in your basic programs using a string versus a loop and reading data statements and poking them into memory. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below or if you have any suggestions on how to uh, improve it or any comments. And uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Go Atari.